Thank you. Thank you, Kansas City. Today concludes a long journey that has taken me from Southern California throughout America. And I very honestly stand humbly before you today in Cooperstown. As with any journey, I have been helped by so many people. That is why this induction is so special to me. I get to stand here and thank the many, many people who have helped me over my career in many different ways besides just playing baseball. I have always believed we live with our friends, not our accomplishments. I haven't accomplished one thing in baseball since I retired, but I still have a lot of friends. To two old teammates I had, Duke Wath and John Wath, and I played against, I played with him in the minor leagues. I played with him in the major leagues for so long and then got a chance to play for him. Duke, I appreciate all the friendship we've had over the years. Hal McCray, whom I consider the best hitting coach in baseball right now. He's the one that taught me how to play the game of baseball. He led by example. He ran balls out, he slid into second, tried to break up double plays. He stretched singles to doubles, doubles to triples. He would do whatever it took to win a ball game. And you know what? He wasn't in a hurry to go home when it was over. He was willing to sit in his locker, have a few cold ones, and discuss the game for as long as it took to learn something from other players or to help them learn. He was a great teammate and a great man, man to play for. I'd like to thank the Kansas City Royal Organization for their support over so many years. I signed with them in 1971 and I'm still with them. Hopefully I'll be with them for a long time. My teammates over the last 20 years that I've had, thank you for all your friendship. It's been so important to me. You all have made such an impact on my life, but not only as a player, but as a man. There is one that stands out. Jamie Quirk. Thanks. Charlie Lau was my hitting coach in 1974. At that time, I was hitting 200 with 200 at-bats at the All-Star break. He put his arm around me and he said, George, I think you got a chance to hit, but you're going to have to change a few things. I said, well, what do you have in mind? And he said, well, I'll tell you what. We have two days off for the All-Star break. We have practice at 5 o'clock on Wednesday, and then we're going to jump on a plane and fly to Baltimore. Why don't you meet me at the stadium at 2 o'clock and we'll sit down and we'll discuss it and we'll try to figure out a philosophy and a theory that will work for you. Well, we got out there and we looked at video of players that he's helped before and other players that uh, he wanted to maybe model myself after. And we started to take batting practice every day. I think for as long as Charlie Lau was our hitting coach, he and I had extra batting practice, 3 o'clock on the road, 4 o'clock at home. Some days it was for five swings, ten swings, just to make sure you didn't lose anything from the day before. And some days might have been for 15, 20 minutes, trying to find out what's happened from the night before. But Charlie, thank you so much for molding me as a ball player and making today possible. I ran into little Charlie yesterday and he gave me this New York Yankee ring to wear. Charlie, I can't do it. <laughs> I don't like those Yankees still. In the outfield, the veteran Lou Pinella in left. Bobby Brown in center field and Reggie and Wright.
Rick Cerrone, excellent throwing catcher, who has also put together some outstanding offensive stats this year, and pitcher Tommy John. Tommy first will face Willie Wilson, and here to call the action for you, Al Wiss. All right, Denny, any goosebumps left after that Mark thrilling Simon series of ceremonies play. before the game? Mark well, Simon chances are you'll expend them in the game tonight. The Royals and the New York Yankees with the Royals one game away, one win away from the World Series. Willie Wilson, UL Washington, George Brett at the plate here in inning number one against Tommy John, 22-9 and nine on the year, 3.43 ERA. Tommy John, brilliant in playoff series in the past. Swing and a ground ball hit by Rodriguez. There is Dent from the hole. He throws. Got him. One pitch and one away, and it is a ground ball. The calling card of Tommy John, which begins this ball game tonight. The Royals 7-2 winners in game number one. Gurr, the complete game victory. Game number two, 3-2 victory. As Dennis Leonard and Quisenberry combining as you watch the first put out of the game by Bucky Dent over to Bob Watson. And UL Washington at the plate with one gone here in the first, hitting 273 with six home runs and 53 RBIs in the regular season. In the playoff series, 286 is average, two for seven with an RBI. The pitch is in there for a called strike one. That's a good pitch by Tommy John. You've seen both of his effective pitches now. The sinker to Willie Wilson leading the game off and the good curveball to UL Washington. Tommy John, 37 years old, 0-1 against the Royals this year as Denny ran down. He, however, in the regular season, won five of his last seven games. The one-strike pitch on the way. One and one to count to UL Washington. Tommy John, his start, though he was the top winner for the Yankees this year, delayed until game number three, and a couple of reasons coming into play for that as UL Washington stands in. John... The 1-1 pitch, 2-1 to count. First of all, he is much more effective here at Yankee Stadium with the natural turf versus the artificial turf of Royal Stadium. Of course, ground balls, but he serves up most of the time, 20 of them in one game earlier against the White Sox this year. Line drive, hit the center field, little drop for a base hit. Over to Corral, the ball in the series of hops is Bobby Brown. So the first hit of the ball game is UL Washington, slaps a single to center field. Also coming into play, the bad back of Tommy John. John had to leave a game one week and two days ago early because his back was kicking up and giving him problems. So a couple of left-handed veteran pitchers tonight, each very productive in their major league careers, each troubled this season by back problems. Let's see how they do tonight. A man on with a man out and George Brett at the plate, 390 with 24 home runs. 118 RBIs as the Royals hitting in their half of the first. Brett with 23 hits in the American League Championship Series in which he's played. UL Washington back over to first base. If there's one chink in Tommy John's ar uh, armor, it's right now with a bad move to first base. One, there's his strike. All in one, the count to George Brett. He doesn't possess the type of move that is conducive to keeping runners close. UL Washington, with good speed at first, may be able to exploit that early in this ballgame. Yankees set for two on the infield. One strike pitch pulled to the right side. There's Randolph down to Dent. Back to first, not in time. George Brett safe on the field is choice over first base as Watson turning to look at first base umpire Bill Haller. 4-6 on the put out of UL Washington down at second as you watch it again. The key to hitting that Tommy John sinker is patience. A hitter has to go up there hoping to get a ball high in the strike zone because anything that starts out belt high or below is going to end up below the knees and you're going to smother it into the ground. So two outs this far in the first inning, both on ground balls as Hal McCray getting set to go, hitting 297, 14 home runs, 83 RBIs. He is looking for his first hit in the series. He is 0 for 6. Hal crashing at home play. George Brett over at first base. Flip over there by Tommy John and George back in time. 55 degrees at game time for game number three in the American League playoffs. And as we said, it rained heavily beginning at 7.30 East Coast time. Rained for about 15, 20 minutes. 2-0 pitch. Hit to right field. Slicing to Reggie Jackson. And that's all for the Royals in the first. At the end of a half inning, the Royals no score with the Yankees coming to back. All right, for the Royals defensively, Willie Mays Aikens at first base, Frank White the second baseman, UL Washington at shortstop, George Brett over at third, 
Willie Wilson from Summit, New Jersey in left field. A speech to Amos Otis with a lot of speed in center. And Clint Hurdle over and right making his first start of the playoffs. Behind the plate, Darrell Porter. And on the mound, the big left-hander, Paul Splitoff, who was 114 and lost 11. All right, William, see if Willie Randolph can get them going again. Well, Willie has in the past. He's 4 for 9 in this series. On the year, Willie hit 294 with 7 home runs and 46 runs batted in, in addition to walking 119 times. It'll be Randolph, Buck Gideon, and Bob Watson against the left-hander Paul Splittor. And Willie Randolph takes a strike. like they're going to work Randolph inside. Seems strange as seeing the Royal infielders playing this close where back in Kansas City they play very deep on the artificial surface. Well, Washington. He's got a strong arm and he tags Randolph. Willie Aikens went up and got the ball, came back down. Jeff Thorborg thought Randolph was on the bag when he was tagged. But Bill Allen, the first base umpire, called him out. Here it is. Let's look at it again. He throws flat foot, a strong throw, but high. And, well, that angle. Hey, I think I agree with Torborg. That he was safe. Let's look at it again from another angle. And Washington again, the high throw. Yep. He tagged him high on the shoulder. It looked like his foot had hit the bag. Here's Bucky Dent. Bucky, two for seven, skips away from a ball inside. The Yankees have scored just four runs so far through the first two. Frank White at second. Short hops, two outs. And big Bob Watson's a batter. Bob batting a 307 on the air. He was three, he is three for eight so far in the series. And he hit that double yesterday. We showed you into the left field corner that Randolph tried to score on. And a fine relay from Wilson to Brett to Porter and nailed uh, Randolph at home plate. Base hit for Watson. And it'll go in the corner. Hurdle runs it down, but Watson will hold at second base with his fourth series hit. When Tom Watson goes the other way, he really stings the ball. Beautiful. Watch this ball tailing away. Goes right with it. And Hurdle misplayed this one. It really skips off the wet grass and is by it before he can get over there. And now Reggie Jackson with a chance to put the Yankees on top. That's Watson's third double in the series. He has three doubles and a single. In nine trips, here's Reggie Jackson, two for eight. I think Reggie finally yesterday, Phil, decided to hit the ball where it was fit. Yep, he had been trying to pull everything. And he didn't take that big no. cut at that one. Looks like uh, he's trying to go to left field or up the middle. Reggie trying to get the run in. The Royals have pitched him away. And he couldn't check it. Tipped In fact, his he got bat. a piece of it. Yeah. Yep. No balls, two strikes. There's Watson down at second base, two outs. No score in the bottom of the first. With the count, no balls and two strikes on Jackson. And he struck him out. And Porter will tag him before he leaves home plate. No runs, a base hit. Man left on base at the end of one. Yankees nothing, Royals nothing. Otis likes uh, will lead off here. He would rather hit against left-handers and right-handers. He's three for eight so far in the series. On the year, hit 251 for the Royals. And a strike. John likes Blitor. Has also pitched well in league championship play. He's two and zero. Oh. Both those wins though with the Los Angeles Dodgers. And he has a string of 15 straight scoreless innings now in league championship. 
series play. And he's given up just one run in his last 19 innings of pitching in league championship play. Bucky Dent gets another shot at shortstop. And the dirt, but Watson oh. comes up with it. What a play. Bob Watson. Ah, that was a wicked hot, Bill. Well, Ed, I think he's lucky Bill it took a long bounce to him. Let's watch it. Yep. Bucky turns that ball over, see? Yeah, he's been doing that a little bit. The sinker way out in front of Watson, and it came up, as Bill said, didn't stay on the ground and scoot under the glove. That's a big out. Well, there's one away here in the second. Good play by Bob Watkins. Mr. Watson. Willie Mays Aikens a batter. Aikens one for seven. That was a big hit. Beat mm. Gidry. Two RBIs after they walked a man to get to him. And he takes low ball one. Yankees suing the Royals. All left-handers. Gidry started the first game. Rudy Mays started yesterday. Tommy John here tonight. And it's two balls and no strikes on Aikens. Well, he guessed curveball yesterday on Rudy May and really ripped one to right field. And it's two and one on Aikens. Yeah, he really did hit that ball. Tremendous foul. And he goes the other way for a base hit. But now I can cut him down. Wakens does not run well, and he'll have to hold at first base. Outstanding play by Pinella. Now, if that were in Kansas City, that ball would have been bouncing off the wall and at least a double for Aikens. Well, I don't know about Aikens now. <laughs> well, <laughs> Willie, uh, we laugh, but it, it really, it's not, to, we shouldn't probably laugh because he has had some knee problems, but he, even before the knee problems, he couldn't run well. That's right. Darrell Porter, the batter. He's hitting 249 on the year. Seven home runs, 51 runs batted in. One for seven in the series. And John misses outside. One out, one on. No score in the second inning. There's Porter. John's curve misses. Two balls, no strikes. And it's two and one. Two and two on Porter. Tommy John threading the needle on the outside corner. And the curveball just missed. John wanted it. Three oh, and two man. on Porter. Did you see Tommy recoil on that one? And John misses outside. Ball four. And the Royals have runners at first and second with one away. And the batter is the right fielder, Clint Hurdle. He's batting for the first time in the series. He had 294 on the year, 10 home runs and 60 runs batted in. That might be two. Dent Randolph. Double play. 6 4 3. No runs, a base hit. Man left on base. We're going to the bottom of the second. The Yankees nothing, and the Kansas City Royals nothing. All right, scoreless ball game. We look at Dick Hauser uh, pacing the Yankee dugout. And in the corner, it's Jim Fry. Jim Fry got the dark glasses on. Billy Connors is pitching coach with his hands on his hips. Hey, I told Don Connie every time I mention a birthday or an anniversary or a wedding, we win. And Nancy Pope, Lev Pope's daughter, who is the president of Channel 11 WPIX, and Tommy O'Connell are getting married tomorrow. Congratulations. All right, Scooter. And uh, taking high is Eric Soderholm leading off of the Yankees here in the second. Be a nice wedding present for them. Yep. Nice win. And he pops it up. Frank White, second baseman calling. And there's one away. Soderholm let that ball get in just a little bit and got under it. One down here in the second inning. And Rick Cerrone is the batter. Cerrone three for eight in the series. And the curve misses. Do it all on Cerrone. And Rick takes the strike. It's two and one. 
And it's fouled back. Field back out of play. Two and two. Got him with a breaking ball. Second strikeout for Splintor. And they're two outs. With a curveball here on Strong. Good motion, too. It goes down and Rick way out in front. Oh, Splitdorf has chalked up his second strikeout, and the batter now is Lou Pinella. Lou is one for three. With a run batted in, that base at a home run, hit it behind Cerrone. Splitdorf looks fast. It's not that fast ball pass to Pinella. Strike one. And misses one and one. Two balls and a strike on Pinella. Two outs, nobody on base. Yankees and Royals, no score in the second inning. And it's three and one. And all year, Phil, the Yankees have sort of built walls to try to climb over, and have done it again here, of course, with the help of Kansas City. Yep. Royals have been tough through the first two. Lou Pinella's yelling at Jim Fry over there. Lou would like to get oh. something going. <laughs> Attaboy, Lou. <laughs> Lou does not like to lose. Nope. And you like players like that. He would do anything to try to ignite the Yankees. And it's ball four. Pinella off. That's the first pass given up by Split Door. Pinella's on at first base. There are two outs. That's only the third walk given up by Kansas City pitches in this series. The Yankees have given up nine base on balls. Big difference. Yep. Rodriguez, Aurelio Rodriguez, one for four in the series. There are two outs. Pinella's at first base. And the curve is fouled off. Lou, of course, not a threat to steal, but I think in this situation, with the Yankees needing a win, Fry is going to make sure he's not going to play Aikens behind Pinella. Normally, you would play the first baseman behind Lou. That might be trouble. But not Second base. Little chopper down the third baseline. Smithorf took a long time getting that ball. Not only that, but if he lets it go, it's got a kick foul. Big break for the Yankees. He had a lot of English. And then he throws off balance. And Aurelio beats it out. So the Yankee runners at first and second with two outs, and Bobby Brown will try to get the Yankees on the board first here in game three. Bobby's been held hitless so far by the Royals. He's 0 for 6. He's about two. On the ground is short. Washington is there. Flips the white for the force on Rodriguez. That'll retire the side. No runs, a base hit. Two men left at the end of two. Yankees nothing and Kansas City nothing. It ain't over till it's over, and I'm sure that's what the Yankees are thinking right now as the Royals get set to go in inning number three. Frank White, Willie Wilson, UL Washington for the Royals. Royals hopeful of wrapping it up tonight. The Yankees would like to stay alive. Tommy John on the mound, breaking pitch for a called strike one. Frank White, he has been marvelous in the first two games of the series. One strike pitch, one and one. 7 14 his average in games one and two. Five for seven, two runs scored, two RBIs. 1 1 pitch on the way. 2 and 1 to Frank. Two one delivery is ripped to the glove of Rodriguez. Found it with the black hand, that old glove of Radio's. Comes up with a new trick. Spears the liner of Frank White. One gone for the Royals here in the third. Here's Willie Wilson. One strike to Will. 
Al, Tommy John throwing a, uh, more breaking balls early in the ball game than I'm accustomed to seeing him throw. One strike pitch high, one and one. Tommy says he's still capable of throwing an 89 mile per hour fastball, which is very adequate, but he won't showcase it very often. One one pitch. Chopper hit to the left side, backhanded by Dent across the diamond in time. And we'll take another look at it. You can see the sinker of Tommy John working, going down and away to Willie Wilson. He beats it in the ground. Bucky Dent over in the hole to make a very good play. He had one chance on that ball, and he did it exactly right. So yet another ground ball served up by Tommy John as Bucky Dent able to get there in time and flip it across the diamond, the stretch by Bob Watson. That is the fifth ground ball in the first three innings served up by Tommy John. Two gone for the Royals here in the third, and UL Washington now at the plate. UL lined to center field for a base hit his first time up. John serves. 1 0 oh, the count. Tommy John tattooed by the Royals in his only appearance against them this year. Scored something like eight runs in about three innings. 1 0 oh, pitch, 2 0 oh, the count. UL Washington at the plate here in the third. Nobody on, two outs, no score in the game. 2 0 delivery, right back up the middle, through the wickets. There's Willie Randolph, braces and throws in time. Yeah, it looked like a base hit, but Randolph was able to get there behind second base to Spirit and flip over to first, and that's all for the Royals. One, two, three in the third at the end of two and a half, no score. Last of the third, Yankee Stadium. Randolph at the plate, leading off, takes a curveball, ball one. Boy, baseball fortunate tonight, at least in Yankee Stadium. It was raining right before game time. The rain stopped, we've not had a drop since. 1-0 pitch, hit up the middle, base hit. Lead off man on for the Yankees. That's the first time tonight that this has happened for either team, as Willie Randolph Scoots it up the middle for a base hit. Randolph over at first base along with Willie Akins. Leadoff man on for the Yanks. And remember, he's a dangerous customer. Thoroughly stolen bases this year. There you look at Bucky Dent. Grounded out to second his first time up. One strike pitch. Reaches out. Knocked down by Spillow. Goes down to second for one. Back to first. Double play. Oh, what a tremendous relay by Frank White. He got it late, had the runner bearing in on him, and barely even had time to cock the arm and still got a bunch on the throw. Watch this. Had to throw around the runner and still got enough on it to get Bucky Dent. So a 1-4-3 double play for the Royals. And that erases Willie Randolph and company. Two gone very quickly here in the third. And Bob Watson at the plate. That was a very important double play because, as you can see, with Watson now at the plate, Jackson following him, the power portion of the Yankee lineup, now will be faced by Paul Spittor. But with the bases empty, swung on and missed in a breaking pitch, one strike. Watson for the double. His first time up to right field. Seemed to pick up speed as it skipped off the wet turf. And then caromed off the wall and right. One strike pitch. One and one to count. There are veteran left-handers, both Hoosiers on the mound tonight, both from Indiana, split off against Tommy John. One one pitch. Chopper hit over the mound behind second base into center field for a base hit. Well, the importance of the double play accentuated by that single by Watson. And now Reggie Jackson to the plate in the scoreless game here in the third. There's another look at it. You can see it's a breaking ball, and it's up in the strike zone, exactly where Paul Spudoff didn't want to throw it. Bob Watson, the kind of hitter that he is, is able to shovel up the middle for a base hit. Uh, Jackson has Watson over at first base. Reggie struck out his first time up. With the Yankee faithful exhorting their home team on. But the Royals have the advantage in games. Two wins to none. Jackson. Two for four yesterday. Takes a strike. Reggie, when he struck out on the first tee, got a good pitch to swing at, didn't he? 
Yes, he did. He uh, fouled off two consecutive 0-2 pitches, and then Paul came almost right down the middle with a good fastball. One strike pitch on the way to Jackson. Hit long but foul down the left field line. He's behind on the count of 2 Reggie Jackson, a low fastball hitter, and Stevie has started him out, challenging him here with two low fastballs. I think Paul really feels confident going after Reggie Jackson after seeing Larry Gura basically stay with fastballs and hard sliders away. Hurdle very deep and right. Otis deep and straight away center field. There you see Watson with, wait a minute now, apparently a balk by Paul Splitoff as Watson going down to second base. And here comes Jim Fry saying, hey, what happened? Uh, Jim asked the question that uh, Paul had not gone into his stretches of yet. He wanted to find out from first base uh, umpire Bill Haller. You can see Paul Spur up there uh, not really being too receptive or uh, whatever about Bill Haller. He, he wasn't sure if he did or not, but Bill Haller made the call. Then we're going to look at it. What happens? You see right there, Paul Splitter began to go into his stretch motion while still on the rubber and then stopped. Once you begin a motion while you're in contact with the rubber, you have to complete it. Now well, let's see if that is a crucial error. Is the Yankees hitting with two outs and now a man in scoring position and Watson over at second base. And you know the dangers. Reggie Jackson becomes even more dangerous with man in scoring position. But he's hitting behind on the count of one, two. Man at second, two outs. No score in the game. Two strike pitch to Jackson. He popped him up, but it's drifting over toward the stands. There's George Brett by the photographer's row. He won't get there. It's back in by about four rows. Bear in mind that there's an auxiliary photographer's row that cuts out about four to five feet of the playing field. There's a look at Reggie's swing. You can see, again, he does not get cheated. A fastball about bell high on the outside part of the plate. Reggie's timing a little bit off, and he fouls it into the stands. Oh, Jackson alive. Watson over at second base. Two outs. Two-strike pitch to Jackson. Curveball. He struck him out. Big strikeout to Paul Spudoff, and the Yankees and Jackson gone in the third. At the end of three, no score. And the Royals and the Yankees have hung nothing but goose eggs on the board through three here at Yankee Stadium. Tommy John with three tough customers to face here in the Royals half of the fourth. George Brett, Al McRae, and Amos Otis. In the air, shallow left center. Out goes Bucky Dent. Lou Pinella coming on and calling. One gone for the Royals in the fourth, and here's Hal McRae. Hal fly to right his first time in. 0 for 7 now in this 1980 championship series. 1 and 1 now. Hal McRae feels very confident, I believe, hitting at Yankee Stadium. He likes to hit the ball to right center, right field, especially off a of sinker ball pitcher such as Tommy John. 433 average for McRae against the Yankees this season, and he'll improve it right there. Solid single to center by McCray. One on and one out for the Royals now, and Amos Otis the hitter. A.O. bounced to shortstop his first time up. Three for nine now in the playoffs. Rain coming down steadily. Otis hits it to right field. Reggie Jackson started in, now goes back to make the play. That ball had a lot more carry than it looked like it would when it left the bat, Steve. The ball seems to jump off Amos Otis's bat. Uh, here you get a shot at uh, Reggie Jackson going back to the track. He didn't get a real good jump on it. I think uh, as we were, Reggie was a little bit fooled by how much the ball would carry. Two down now for Willie Akins, who singled to left his first time in. Akins only 25 years old. He's got a bunch of home runs in front of him. Look at the rain pelt down now on Tommy John. Outside ball one. Bob Watson getting a handkerchief to wipe the rain off of his glasses. One of the very difficult things, Dan, you can see Reggie Jackson uh, shading his eyes from the rain. Very difficult if you wear glasses when it begins to have a heavy mist such as this. Daryl Porter on the Royals, a similar problem as does Paul Spudor. They're going to need windshield wipers if this keeps up. Pitch from Tommy John just misses again, 2-0. Seems to be coming down harder by the moment. And that's going to do it, I think. Umpires 
hold up their hands and say, let's get out of here. There is Larry McCoy, the home plate umpire. Well, this comes with two men out and one Royal on base in the fourth inning of a scoreless game. George Brett flied out to left to begin this inning. Hal McRae singled to center, and Amos Otis flied to right. Willie Aikens at bat now with a 2-0 count on him as the Reigns force a suspension of play here at Yankee Stadium. The field appears to be in good shape, Steve. Yes, it does, Danny. Uh, I believe that uh, if you take a look at Tommy John, the umpire has made the very correct decision at the right time to get the tarpaulins out on the field, protected from uh, especially the skin portion of the infield from getting too wet, too soggy. Uh, there are a couple of spots such as uh, where Tommy John is striding from the rubber out to about eight feet in front of the rubber where they've sprinkled some uh, uh, drying substance out there so that uh, neither pitcher will uh, will slip on the uh, on the wet uh, clay. If Tommy John could retire Willie Aikens and the Royals here in the fourth it would give him a string of 18 straight scoreless innings in playoff competition. The previous 14 for the Los Angeles Dodgers in the National League. Willie Aikens hitting with two out. Daryl Porter would be next if Willie Aikens could keep it alive. It is 9.58 Eastern time as we resume. A 32-minute rain delay, and just as we get ready to go again, the rains begin again. McCray with a short lead away from first. Lined off the glove of Bob Watson. Willie Randolph retrieves it in shallow right. A base hit for Willie Aikens. Denny, that, that ball was a very hard hit line drive by Willie Aikens. Here you see it again. It's a 2-0 and fastball, the first pitch after the rain delay. And Willie Aikens gets all of that ball. He hit it right on a line drive. Bob Watson almost in self-defense put his glove up. It caromed off Watson's glove. By the time Willie Randolph could retrieve it, we have runners at first and second. You saw Bob Watson at first there saying, I'm glad I at least had a glove. Daryl Porter, the batter now. Daryl walked his first time up. Was erased on a double play ball by Clint Hurdle. Hit to left field. Right at Lou Pinella. As the chant, Lou goes up. That's all for the Royals in their half the fourth. After three and a half, a scoreless ball game at Yankee Stadium. The first man he'll face here in the Yankee half of this scoreless game of the fourth inning is Eric Soderholm. He got Soderholm to pop out to the second baseman his first time in. Earlier this season, though, Soderholm took one deep against Spudorf to right field. Look at the determination on the face of Spudorf. Fastball hit deep to right field. Back goes Hurdle. He's got room. One pitch and one out in the Yankee fourth. That ball did not seem to carry real well. The air getting a little soggy here in the Big Apple. Well, you take a look there at the uh, rain falling uh, on Yankee Stadium, and it is going to cut down on the carriage of the ball, uh, especially into the corner right field. The wind seems to swirl uh, in that portion of the stadium and knock the ball down a little bit. Rick Surround, the hitter now. A strikeout victim his first time in. The center field. It's solidly, but Amos Otis there. That is hitting the ball into Death Valley here at Yankee Stadium. 430 feet to that area of the ballpark. Lou Pinella standing in now with two Yankees gone in the fourth. Nobody on. Curveball to Brett at third. Bobbles and fires. Got him. Three up and three down for the Yankees in the fourth after four full were scoreless at Yankee Stadium. Here's Hurdle standing in now. Clint batted 478 against the Yankees this year and was very outspoken in his disappointment about not starting the first two games of this series. Tommy John trying to tease him with a breaking pitch to start him off. Ball one. Missed ball two. Hurdle was a very consistent hitter for the Royals this year. His average never dropped below 290 after June the 7th. His best month was June when he hit 432. In for a strike, 2-1. and one. The 2-1 from Tommy John. Stitched the outside corner, strike two. John's control has been magnificent when it's had to be tonight. He's 
struck him out. Then Hurdle caught looking. That's the first strike out of the game for Tommy John, who has fanned only 54 men now in about 240 innings this season. There you get another look at it. It's a breaking ball. It looks like a slider. It just does catch the outside corner, and Clint Hurdle was completely off stride. Frank White standing in. He lined out to third baseman Aurelio Rodriguez his first time up, dropping his playoff average to a cool 625. Only five men in playoff history have ever hit 500 or better. Last man to do it was Chris Chambliss in 1976. This one is hit deep to left field. It's going to be gone. Home run, Frank White. Touch them all, Frank. The scoreless deadlock is broken as Frank White lights up the scoreboard for the Royals in the fifth. Oh, my, Denny, that, that is a clutch, clutch performance by Frank White picking up where he left off in the first two games of the series, hitting a, a Tommy John fastball into the left field seats and really giving it a ride. There you see it disappear out into the crowd. Ray Wilson standing in now takes ball one. Frank White has had 11 game-winning RBIs this year, and that one could turn out to be an even dozen if Paul Spudarf can hang on to the lead. Hit sharp with a right field, another base hit for Willie Wilson. Bobbled momentarily by Reggie, but a quick retrieve and back in. Willie Wilson now one for three, bounced out his first two times up and then rifles a shot to right field. There's another look at it, and Willie Wilson does exactly what you have to do with Tommy John. Hit the ball the other way or where it's pitched, can't try to pull him. Interesting fact looking at the scorebook, and of course the Royals in front one nothing on the home run. In the first three innings, six ground ball out served up by Tommy John. Six to the third inning. Every out that has been made on contact has been hit in the air, or there have been base hits, or in the case of Frank White, a home run. And activity now in the bullpen for the Yanks. Ron Davis, the right-hander, and Tommy Underwood, the left-hander, warming in the Yankee pen. We mentioned that the last guy to hit over 500 in the playoffs was Chris Chambliss, and of course the last hit he got in that 76 series will live in infamy for Royals fans. It decided it. this Frank White blast could end the 1980 playoffs. It has put the Royals in front one to nothing, but a lot of baseball to be played here at Yankee Stadium tonight. Might the Royals send a message to the Yankees here and say we're not going to back off our aggressiveness now that we've got the lead? Will they send Willie Wilson? Let's see. One and one the count on UL Washington. Missed away. You would have to say the count and the situation are in favor of the Royals. Bounced out in front of the plate. Cerrone has only one play. He slips, fires to first and got it. Very close play at first. Oh, goodness, the, the, the wet infield almost came into play. Here you see a ball chopped out in front of home plate. Rick Cerrone makes a good break. Out, comes out, picks up the ball, and slips right there on the wet turf. Ooh, very close. Very close. He was out. Are you? I'm not so sure he was out. I'm not sure he was. The only thing I'm sure of is that Bill Haller called him, called out, him and out. he goes back to the dugout. Yankee trainer Gene Monahan out now, working on Bob Watson. Appears to be all right. Lacing up the spikes again. So Wilson now has moved into scoring position with two down and George Brett the hitter. Here's the one one delivery on the ground to Dennett short. Got it. So the Royals are gone in the fifth but not before they put one on the scoreboard a solo homer by Frank White. At the end of four and a half, halfway through in Yankee Stadium, the Royals won, the Yanks nothing. Bobby Brown and Willie Randolph to follow. Rodriguez with a base hit in the second inning. Bounces it foul. Oh, and well, we certainly talk about George enough. He gets enough publicity. We'll talk about Ewing Kaufman, owner of the Kansas City Royals. Man who's built a pretty good ball club there. And just one game away, or half a game right now, from their first ever pennant. 
I bet he's really happy. Mm. Pop foul out of play. Well, it's really it's interesting as far as the way they built their ball clubs, uh, the philosophies. Uh, I think on a 25 man playing here tonight for the Royals, 15 have come through their farm system, and the Yankees have the 25, two. And that's uh, Bobby Mercer, who of course was here very early, 65, and came back, and uh, of course Ron Guidry. First, you got to give George Steinbrenner credit for the fact that the Yankee farm clubs now are very strong where they weren't before. He spent the money down there in the farm clubs, and I think you will be seeing a lot of players coming out of the Yankee farm club. Two and two. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, the, the Yankee farm system, all the clubs except one won a pennant this year and last year. They've been really coming along the last two or three years since he's put that, uh, he puts down a manager down there, a pitching coach, a hitting coach. He's really going all out. Well, I talked to Joe Alden. Belly, who uh, managed the Columbus Club, had a fantastic year, and uh, he had John Kennedy, who uh, we played against in the 1966 World Series for the Dodgers, and uh, he had Sammy Ellis, who used to pitch for the Cincinnati Reds. 3-2 pitch is popped up, shallow right field. Frank White, man of the hour right now, makes the catch. One guy. Al, well, that's the direction our organization is going to uh, in the future. We're going to go and build up our farm club and bring the players up through our system. What about free agents? Will you go after any of those? Uh, we, we might take a little shot at them next couple this first year here and maybe a little bit next year, but we're not going to do anything to hurt our organization. Uh, we'd like getting those players who want no trade, no cut contracts. You don't think George is going to get any uh, free agents that they lose tonight, do you? <laughs> want to know the count on Bobby Brown. I think he'll be looking for uh, some speedy outfielders next year, and I uh, wouldn't be too surprised if he made a strong bid for that young man over there in San Diego. He's got the Bucks to sign him, too. Dave Winfield we're talking about. 1-0 pitch. He's high in the air to left center field. And Willie Wilson makes the catch. Two down. Two out in the fifth inning with the base is empty. And Willie Randall, the batter. Grounded out and singled. Two out. Base is empty. The Yankees have scored only four runs in this series. Three of them have been on home runs with the base is empty. Pinella, Cerrone, and Nettles last night and inside the Parker. And the uh, fourth one was really scored on a ball that John Wathen lost in the light. So conceivably they could have scored three runs in, in, in really two and a half ball games. Similar to what we did last year against Pittsburgh. We went in the last uh, with a three to a three to one game lead and scored two runs in the last three ball games. It's just tough. We had three well pitched games but just weren't well pitched well enough to win. Well, you made a liar out of me. I predicted y'all going to win. Two balls, no strikes on Randolph. Three. I'm not going to listen to your predictions anymore, but you told us the Yankees in four. <laughs> you know, I, I'm starting to believe that I'm not going to predict anymore. <laughs> and stuff. What makes this so interesting? Well, I changed this now. It's, it's uh, three out of five now. Three out of five. All right. right. That's right. For you. First you had them in three, and then you had them in four, and now you have them in five. Well, you know, that's the way the day goes. You're allowed to switch. Tomorrow you may have them in seven. <laughs> Inside, ball four to Randolph. So Willie draws a second walk given up by Splitoff. Randolph aboard for the second time in the game. And up comes Bucky Dent. Grounded out and grounded into a double play over two. Yeah, I think we've got to see Willie Steele on the base or trying to steal yeah, the base. Anyway. I would think so. I'm just going to bring that point up right here. Uh, the Yankees with very little speed, only Brown and Randolph are really threats to go, but they've got to get something cooking here. Yeah, they've got to create it. He's got to steal second base right now. I'm not sure if he can. Uh, you know, the, the dirt's a little bit wetter. And Splitoff has a fairly good move. He's deceptive. Oh, I want to count. Well, you know, you always tell the runner, if you're going to get picked off... Uh, or get thrown out, get thrown out of first base, take the chance, get a good lead, and go. I'd rather see him thrown out of first base than being thrown out of second base by 10 feet. Randolph, 30 steals during the regular season, caught five times. Hit in the air to center field. Amos Otis makes the catch, and the Yankees are done here in the fifth inning. No runs, no hits. Leave one through five. One nothing Kansas City. We'll return to New York after this word from our local station. It's tough to reach perfection, like pitching a perfect game. But jockey brand underwear really comes close with the comfort and quality of pure comb cotton. And real quality means real value. I always wear jockey brand. 
either classic white or fashion colors. If I pitch the way Jockey makes underwear, I never lose a game. Jockey, more than a name, a commitment. Leading off for the Kansas City Royals in the top of the sixth inning, the designated hitter, Hal McRae. I talked to Hal earlier. All right, Hal, a final figure, 297 for the year. Overall, though, assess your performance for 1980. Well, I got to be happy with it. Uh, I got off to a real slow start. I was hitting about 250 at the break. I went to 314. I hit a bad slump. I came on strong at the end, but I had to be happy with the year I had because I didn't know whether I could hit or be a good hitter again because I had a bad shoulder operation and I was couldn't get the balls that I had been hitting before. So I think I proved something to a lot, a lot of people and I proved a lot to myself. And I think, you know, next year I'll be a 300 hitter again. Now McRae. Finishing just three points under that figure this year. Swings and misses. 0 and 1. Very aggressive base runner. Good, hard, clean baseball player. One ball, one strike to count. Of course, when you're the manager on the other team and he knocks one of your second basemen out of there, you don't like that very yep. much, Al. In the playoffs. A couple of years ago. Bouncer to short. Then. Over to Watson. One away here in the sixth inning with nobody on. Kansas City leading it one to nothing on the home run by Frank White. And Tommy John to face Amos Otis. Builders, Amos Otis. Going to the downs. 0 and 1. Willie Akins, who has two hits tonight on deck. One run, six hits for Kansas City. No runs, four hits for the Yankees. Don't think that Tommy John isn't trying to make every pitch perfect. Puts a lot of pressure on a pitcher to be down two games in the playoffs and, and down a run in the in the third ball game. And I think they got the right guy out there. One ball, one strike. Tries to bunt his way on, and Sarone makes the effort but has no play. Really, let me ask you about. The use of Gossage. The Yankees obviously would like the Goose to come in to protect the one run lead and pick up a save, but now you're down. You've got your backs to the wall. If Tommy John runs into trouble, do you go to the Goose in this situation? I would think so, Al. I don't think they can wait to any longer. I think they got to go out there and stop it right away. And Goose is capable of going four or five innings. You just hope that if he had to go that long, that they'd come back tomorrow and get a complete game if they won the ball game. Ball strike three. Amos didn't like the call. It also looked like he was not looking for that location by any stretch of the imagination. And Larry McCoy. I think Larry told him it was a good pitch. That's uh, about all an umpire can say. Until you say something. <laughs> I think the ball the ball looks high, but he hasn't been calling many low pitches. And if he's had a tendency to call any pitch, it's the ball up. You know, Amos might have thought it was high and inside. I think he thought it was inside. That's, I think his complaint was... So two down with the bases empty and Willie Akins two for two with a couple of singles three for nine in the playoffs. Now ready again in the 2 2 pitch is bounce to the right side Randolph great stab great. Goes, pulls Watson off and he can't make the tag. So Willie Randolph stopping it from going on through, but Aikens has his third hit here. Well, he makes a nice play. The thing I wonder is that it didn't look like Bob was really situated around the, the bag to, to go either way. And uh, it looked like if he had shifted his feet, you'll probably see it right here. Now, if he's the other way on the other side of the bag, it's an easy play. Yep. He just kind of uh, just assumed the ball would be in one side of the bag and really wasn't ready for, for a throw on either side. Absolutely correct, Jim. He positioned himself wrong and got caught in that old trap where you got your body crossed up there and he couldn't come back on the other side. You always got to look for that bad throw over there. Darrell Porter walked and flied out, takes outside for a ball, one to go. That's what you teach at second base at all the positions. Always look for a bad throw because when you get the good one, you're not going to be surprised. But you will be surprised when you get that bad one. 
It's away from Sharon. Aiken moving along to second. And the count will be 2 and 0 oh on Daryl Porter. I think Something if a manager's really, uh, excuse me, Billy, if a manager's really into stats, and Daryl, uh, I think, getting five out of seven hits off Tommy John, do you think about maybe pitching a hurdle in this situation? Well, I, I would actually would like to see that happen because uh, Porter's been swinging the bat well. Look, we have the trainer out there in the mound right this time. That's Gene Monahan. Oh, I guess the, his the mud is clogging up his spikes and bringing out that little little old stick you guys carry out there. Usually, don't you have it behind the mound so you can reach, go get it? Yeah, I, I agree with you, Jim. I would, I would, if you are going to pitch to him, pitch very careful. Tommy John can pitch around him. Just hope he swings at a bad ball. And if you walk him, you don't care. High in the air to left center field and routine for Lou Pinello. Royals gone in the set. No run. One hit. Lee one. Yanks come up. Watson will lead off in the bottom of the sixth. It's one to nothing Royals. Well, we've got a scene reminiscent of what happened at Dodger Stadium over the weekend. The crowd trying to spur the Yankees on. So they finally get raucous here as the Yanks come up in the bottom. Rolling. It looks like Sportark still has his good stuff, making good pitches. You don't really hear him because you really have a, a kind of like a tunnel between you and the catcher. Two and one. And then again, Steve Carlton went to cot in his ears, though. Well, I think everybody has a different uh, degree of, uh, of acuteness of, of concentration. Two and two. Didn't seem to bother him there. Two, and, two balls, one strike. Came back with a curveball. Excellent pitch. Some guys get too excited over swing. The 2-2 two -two pitch to Watson. Line drive. Great catch by White. Frank White timing his jump perfectly and takes a base hit away from Watson, who is bidding for his third hit of the game. Just a wonderful play. Super play. High fastball out over the plate. Really kind of gets in on him, I guess, and he just fights it off, and he hits it awfully good because he is a strong guy, and White going as high as he can go. I don't think he can get up there much higher. The crowd standing red G, red G, 0 for 2, struck out twice. 0 and 1. There he is, Frank White. Home run tonight. That's the difference in the game. Six hits in the series. Started the double play last night that ended the game. The Yankees with really only one threat, second inning, and two on, two out. Brown grounded out. That's been it. Line drive. Fair ball. Into the corner. Willie Wilson out onto the track to run it down. And Reggie has a double. Well, Reggie Jackson telling Bob Euchre during the rain delay, you need one guy to get to ignite the team. And He's going to provide the spark. There's there the again, Al. He went with the pitch instead of trying to pull it and went right down the line with it. That's it's just tremendous. Really, it's, it's good hitting. Well, that's what he said he was going to do. Uh, he just wasn't going to try to pull the ball because Reggie's really not a full hitter. He has capabilities of hitting the ball out at any part of the park. Jim Fry is going to go to the mound. Now, the Royals have activity in their bullpen. Looks like Quisenberry. It is. Quisenberry and also Rennie Martin. And they're going to make the switch right here. Brett, Fry, and Porter all standing on the mound as Dan Quisenberry comes on here in the sixth inning. Of course, the first out of the inning was a solid shot off the bat of Watson, caught by White, then the double. And here comes Quisenberry. We saw him last night, picked up the save, induced Nettles to hit into the double play. Now that's the decision the manager has to make, and he's the only one in the ballpark going to get the blame or the credit for it. Of course, Quisenberry, just like Kent DeColvey, same sort of motion. And as a matter of fact, the two of them uh, have talked at considerable length with each other. We saw DeColvey there, and here's Quisenberry in action here, almost looking like an instant replay. I talked to Dan before the playoffs. Success this year. 
Um, I would have to point my finger to uh, a guy named Ken Tocolvi. Uh He basically uh, showed me some things that made me, I think, from a, a decent to good pitcher to uh, the fireman of the year, and that was making my motion uh, become a side -on, from a sidearm pitcher to a submarine pitcher, and that made me hide the ball better, and uh, I kept the ball down. I threw more lower sinkers, where last year I had a tendency to get them up, and I gave up a few long balls. When and where did you get the benefit of Tocolvi's knowledge? Uh, it started at a banquet in January last year that Tocolvi and Tanner were in, and then uh, Jim Fry uh, set up an appointment in spring training, and Kent and I met two uh, different times in spring training, and then he called me during the season and uh, when he saw me on TV and uh, did some more adjustments. Dan Quisenberry, <laughs> during that interview, I asked him if uh, Kent had called him during the season because the Colby had some troubles down the stretch. <laughs> As Quisenberry was on his way to 33 saves and Oscar Gamble is there to come up to pinch hit for Soderholm. Yankee Stadium. Packed. Temperature near 50 degrees right now. It has completely stopped raining. Wonderful game of baseball. 60,000 people cheering. You keep your concentration up there. You play golf. One person clicks a camera. And yeah. Trouble starts. It's amazing, isn't it? You're right. <laughs> and that ball's laying there still. <laughs> and this pitch is coming 90, 95 miles an hour at you. Half swing foul. Oscar trying to check. Well, there's that uh, off-speed fastball. He just doesn't throw all his fastballs the same speed. Quisenberry's 1-2 pitch. Grounded to the middle. Backhanded by White to at least save a run, but then he throws the ball away. Jackson coming home, and he scores as the ball winds up in the dugout. So the Yankees tie the game. Oscar's got to go to third base. Oscar Gamble's wife. Oscar's got to go to third base because the play, the ball went in the dugout after he was at second That's base. That's right. They're giving him third right now. Here it is. His White makes a brilliant stop and then throws it away. Well, the intentions are good. A lot of runners will round third base, take a couple extra steps. If you don't have a play at first, a good second baseman will make a throw to third, hoping the runner will be off the base and be tagged out. But it was an off-balance throw. In all fairness to Frank White out there, that ball hit the edge of that carpet out there and took a weird bounce. It did, and it ran a cop. But still, does that have anything to do with the throw that he makes, Billy? No, it does not, Al. He was trying to, uh, to get Reggie when he ran in third base, which is a real heads-up play, a smart play by a second baseman. And it just didn't work out. He threw off balance and made the wild throw. That's a base hit for Gamble and an error charge to White. No RBI, Jackson scoring. We're tied 1-1, Cerrone the batter, runner at third. One away. One and go, take a shot here at the Royals infield with the shortstop Washington. There he is, second baseman Frank White. They're in an either way situation right now. Cerrone at the plate, one ball, one strike to count. Base hit. The New York Yankees take a two to one lead. Instead of the ball being in, look, it's right up in the middle of the plate. Cerrone drove in 85 runs. I don't think he would have had a chance to catch it if he was back either. Clutch hit. He's been doing it all year. Glad you're right, Jim. 2-1 New York. Bottom of the sixth. One out. Lou Pinella. Walked and grounded out. Pinella. White backhanding to first. Got him. 
Frank oh. White, I mean, he's been everywhere. Great play, just a sensational play. One of the best plays I think we've seen in this series. Here's the sinker, Lou just chops it. This is why White wins the Golden Glove most years. Lou doesn't run that well, but makes an excellent play. Greg Nettles, the reason for the reaction right now, here he comes to bat for Rodriguez. So the man who was felled by hepatitis in July, it looked like he wouldn't be back this season at one point, and came back and played in regular season games last Saturday and Sunday. Last night inside the park home run in Kansas City. Coming up here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Well, you have first base open, Billy. Are you going to put him on? Well, I, I <laughs> believe I would, Jim. I don't think I would. Uh, that hit went off me. <laughs> this really points up what Jim Palmer talked about before. You bring in your top reliever now. Quisenberry's in there. They're trailing. What happens if it winds up 2-1 and Quiz goes three and a third? One last night. Gale going tomorrow. If, if, if. We'll see. Well, just off the top of my head, I'd get him out of there next inning while they're behind. You would? Yes. Don't you think it puts a lot of pressure on you then? What do you, what do you tell the writers after the game? Well, <laughs> I shouldn't have brought him in the first time. <laughs> well, that's why you're honest. Well, no, really. What, what, what do you got the game? You're behind now. Zerone at second, two down. One open. One and one. Remember, outside of Quisenberry, that bullpen is shaky at best. Just spectating right now out there. I'd have to think that he'll go with Quisenberry uh, unless they get a base hit here. I mean, he's the best they have. And... Bouncing ball, great stop by Aiken. Slips the quiz covering for the out. And that's that for the Yankees in the sixth inning. But they come from behind, picking up two runs, three hits. The big error by White. Leave one. We go to the seventh at New York Yankees. Two, Royals one. To my brothers. You know, sometimes I wonder why all this has happened to me and not you. All I ever wanted to do was be as good as you. You're watching Royals baseball on WDAF-TV, Channel 4 in Kansas City. Greg Nettles taking over defensively at third base for the Yankees now. Only twice this season did the New York Yankees lose a game after taking a lead into the seventh inning. They lead 2-1 to one as we go to the seventh here, and here's Al. All right, Denny, pins and needles in the latter stages of this game between the Yankees and the Royals. Game number three, American League playoffs. The Royals with misfortune striking in inning number six, and they saw a lead of one to nothing evaporate and turn into a one-run advantage for the New York Yankees. But it's still a paper-thin lead, and the Royals would like to get back in front. They'll start it off with a pinch hitter. John Wathen coming in to hit for Clint Hurdle. He'll be followed by Frank White, and then the top of the order and Willie Wilson. Tommy John remaining on the mound for the New York Yankees. You have to hand it to Spudoff. He pitched very, very well in the five and third innings that he went, allowing one run. It was scored earned. Four hits, two walks, two strikeouts. Uh, John Wathen now at home plate. Wathen looking for still his first base hit in the playoffs. Wathen Waiting on the first offering from Tommy John. Breaking pitch low and inside. Ball one. John in yesterday's game. 0 for 3. Swing and a bounding ball. Hit to the left side. Glove by Dent across the diamond in town. 6 3 in the put out of John Wathen. And that'll bring up Frank White. Frank White, the difference in the game with well, that home run earlier. 
Well, there you see the replay of the ground ball to Bucky Dent coming up with the ball and making a perfect throw to first base. Another ground ball out, surrendered by Tommy John. That's 10 of them now for Tommy John. He's slacking for a while. A lot of balls hit in the air and then, of course, culminated with the home run. But about a hitter after that, settled down again, and since that time, he has picked up four more ground ball outs. So Tommy John might be finding a second win, and if that's the case, it's bad news for the Royals. John with a one-run lead, two to one here in the seventh. The pitch to White, breaking pitch, a strike. Frank White tonight is lined out to third, and Homer. White behind in the count to John, 0-2, who kicks in the two-strike pitch. Foul. That'll go into the Royals' dugout. And the count remains 0-2. It's very easy, Al, to be a little bit overly aggressive after you've made an error defensively and try to make up with your offense for the defensive miscue. A lot of times when you attempt to do that, you're defeating yourself. You think about one mistake, you make another mistake. You just can't do it. One out here in the seventh. 2-1, New York. Two strike pitches fouled off again. And the count remains 0-2. Two strike pitch. Curveball that missed. One and two. The Royals with three innings to try and tie the ball game. Rip foul. Caroming off the tarp roll and up into that section of seats jutting out toward the foul line in left field. One and two. The Yankees getting a tremendous break the last half inning. And they are in front. Two to one. One two pitch. Bounce foul behind home plate. One and two. 1-2 pitch to White. Bounce foul again to Frank. Fouling off pitch after pitch. Staying in there. 1-2 delivery. 2-2. Two and two. There you see the goose in the bullpen. Beyond the monuments. 2-2 two, two pitch to White. Curveball fouled off. Now the 11th hour. 11.05 East Coast time. Royals and Yankees. John Lines, 2-2 pitch. Struck him out. Here's another look at it. Here's a sinker down, and, and the ball is actually out of the strike zone. That ball by Tommy John, though, moves so much, very difficult to lay off that pitch. Two gone for the Royals in their half of the seventh due to the length of tonight's game. Action 4 News normally scheduled at this time will be seen at the conclusion of the ball game. so stay tuned for news immediately following tonight's game. Woody Wilson at the plate, one for three tonight. John Wines in the pitch to Will. Ball one. Now the Royals to the top of their order here in the seventh with two gone. 1 0 delivery. Loop down the line in right field. Could be trouble. Jackson goes over that way. It's a fair ball and off the wall. And here goes Willie Wilson. Wilson hangs on over at second base. A good play by Reggie Jackson to hold Willie Wilson to a double on that play. If you don't play the carom exactly right, uh, it's a stand-up triple for Willie Wilson. Oh, and noticeable by its absence, crowd noise on that last drive off the bat of Willie Wilson. Of course, that corner is very close to home plate. Willie bouncing it in the corner and Jackson getting on the ball in a hurry and now here comes the Yankee skipper Dick Hauser out and he might be making a move here. Hauser going out to tie and he's going to make it. He is going to go to Gossett. So we're going to see the top two relief pitchers in Major League Baseball going head to head in this game in the last several innings. Rich Gossage will come on. Dan Quisenberry came on a half inning ago. Goose Gossage, a big guy with a big arm, 6'2", 217 pounder. Six and two his record this year, 2.27 the ERA, 33 saves. But was he something down the stretch, Steve? He didn't allow an earned run in 18 straight games. In one stretch of August and September, retired 28 straight hitters in one stretch. This guy just comes in and dares you to hit his heat. Well, very much uh, like Dan Quisenberry, they're garnering the same number of saves. The hitter knows what to expect from Rich Gossage, a good fastball. And Rich stands out there and says, all right, here it comes. Let's see what you can do with it. Gossage says the hitters have two strikes on them before they come to the batter's box. That's how much confidence he has. Can heat on the mound right now. The blazing arm of Gossage. 
UL Washington at the plate trying to make contact. Tying run potentially at second base. First pitch, ball one. They appeal and they say no, no way he came close to swinging. 1-0 and the count to UL Washington. Boy, you can see the marked contrast between the velocity of Gossage and the deliveries of John right away. There you see Jackson very shallow in right field along with the rest of the Yankee outfield. The infield is back trying to cut anything off. Two outs. The pitch in for a strike. One and one the count to UL Washington. Yankees would like to try and cut the tying run down at the plate. If it's hit to the outfield, they want to try and choke off anything on the infield. Keep it in there. Great speed over at second base in Willie Wilson. Time call as UL Washington steps out. Yankee pitching coach Stan Williams will tell you that Gossage usually has his best stuff after pitching in short relief two or three days in succession. This is the first we've seen him in game conditions here in the playoffs in 1980. Two on Yankees here in the seventh. The pitch misses. Two and one. The count to UL Washington. Royals leading in the game after the home run of the fifth inning by Frank White. Yankees going in front on a double, a couple of singles, and an air. That happened in the sixth. Two outs. Washington to the plate. Wilson over at second base. Two one pitch. Inside with a slider. Three and one to count. Well, that is what you would commonly call if you were a player canned heat. He throws that ball awfully hard. Well, UL Washington at the plate. Picture of concentration, reading signs from Gordy McKenzie. Wilson over at second base with two outs. Three one pitch on the way. A strike. Take it. To the end of the string now. Seventh inning. Two outs. Wilson at second. George Brett on deck. UL Washington at the plate. Three balls and two strikes. Washington ready to go, then steps out. Gossage on the mound, just peering in. Stone still. He just wants to throw the ball. 3 2 pitch on the way. Bounding ball over the mound. Back of second base. Tough play for Randolph. Safe. UL Washington with a blazing speed paying off, racing up the first baseline and safe. And the Royals have runners at the corners. The tying run potentially over at third base. The lead run potentially at first with George Brett coming to the plate. There's another look at it, Al. The, the chopper hit off the hands. Willie Randolph makes a great play to even make it that close. UL Washington speeding down the line for an infield single. Oh, here's the game on the line right now in the seventh inning. As George Brett 390 on the season, but 0 for 3 tonight. Brett facing the right-hander Gossage in the seventh inning of the third game of the American League playoffs. Tying run for the Royals over at third base in the person of Willie Wilson. Lead run potentially over at first base in UL Washington. Outfield deep at every position now with George Brett at the plate. Set by Gossage, a high drive and deep to right field. It is gone. Three-run home run by George Brett into the third tier of Yankee Stadium. And Brett has taken the Royals and put them in front. Put them in front here in the seventh inning. The Royals now lead it four to two. And a stunned crowd here at Yankee Stadium in New York as Brett being patted on the back by Gordy McKenzie and the welcoming party at home plate as the Royals lead by a pair of runs. Hey heavens, Al George Brett wasting no time stepping into the batter's box. The first offering by Rich Gossage, a fastball, and George hit it into the third deck for a three-run home run. Oh, incredible. He has a flair for the dramatic, and he has come through again. Royals leading four to two here in the seventh. George Brett with a monumental three-run home run cleaning the bases as you watch it again and you knew it was heading out from the moment it hit the bat. Hal McCray at the plate, one ball and two strikes. A stunned crowd here at Yankee Stadium in New York. Gossage. Roughed up by Brett. They thought that was a called strike three, but it's two and two. Well, the faster it comes in, the faster it goes out. And the velocity of Gossage 
meeting the velocity of George Brett's bat, and he changed directions on that ball rapidly. Well, if George was impatient at the plate, that paid off because you can't afford to wait too long on Rich Gossage. The 2-2 pitch to McCray, foul behind home plate. That'll make your heart skip about five beats. My Lord. Three runs in on the home run by Brett. Two two pitches up high. Three and two. The count to Hal McRae. Three two pitch to McRae. Check swing. It's a bouncer, a roller. Tough play for Nettles. He has to hurry. Not in time. A play safe over at first base. Here's another look at it. Hal McCray gets jammed very badly. Hits the ball right above his right hand. Greg Nettles coming in, makes the only play he can make, and the throw is in the dirt, pulling Bob Watson off the bag. So the Royals are not through yet here in inning number seven. But the Yankee, it's like a studio audience right now. The Yankee Stadium crowd, except for sporadic hand clapping by about five people, is absolutely stunned. George turned off the applause sign. Otis at the plate fouls it away. Well, now it's a case of the Royals being able to get through those final two innings, and Denny Treese is going to be going down to the locker room very shortly if the Royals can maintain that lead. As history being made tonight, and you will be there. We may have to get Denny some coveralls if he, unless he wants to wear that nice suit down there. Kind of have to dodge the bubbly. <laughs> Let's hope so. The Royals two outs in their half of the seventh. Pitch to Otis. Swung on and missed. 0 and 2 the count. Still six more outs to go in terms of the Yankees. And looking ahead to their. Check that nine more outs to go. Looking ahead to their half of the seventh. Bobby Brown. Then Willie Randolph and Bucky Dent. He's going. Throw down. Got it. Caught stealing. 2-6. That's all for the Royals here in the seventh. And the Royals are done here in the top of the seventh inning. But George Brett hits a three-run homer off Gossage and through six and a half in New York. Kansas City four, the Yankees two. Three-two pitch. Chopper toward the middle. Randolph will have to hurry. The throw doesn't get him. Runners at first and third. So UL Washington with good speed and the two men up front and Brett who's number three can all move and beat out hits of that sort. So runners at first and third and now he has to face Brett. And again it's just a three two and she throws a strike and this is where the team speed comes through for Kansas City. Willie makes gets rid of the ball as quick as he can and UL Washington can really run. Another close play though. Bill's had some problems down there has he tonight? George Brett hitless tonight. Two for ten in the playoffs and both of those hits came in game one a double that Jackson played very tentatively and then the home run to left center on Wednesday afternoon. Hit in the air to deep right field all the way back and that one is gone. The Royals have taken the lead four to two. So the Goose coming in in a spot Taylor made for him, and all of a sudden Kansas City is back up on top four to two. And several of the Royals out of the dugout to greet him. This is Gossett looking on in disbelief, as are most of the. More than 54,000 fans here tonight. See it again now. And here's the fastball in the middle of the plate. I doubt if he threw that ball 97 miles per hour. Well, we have nine more outs to go in terms of the New York Yankees as the Kansas City Royals. There you see John Wathan in right field. Wathan, of course, came on replacing Clint Hurdle a short time ago offensively. The Kansas City Royals on that tremendous blast by George Brett. A playoff record sixth home run. 
And the tours of duty that he's had in postseason play has put the Royals in front four to two, but it is far from over. Three more innings to go, and Quisenberry will shoulder the burden. The first pitch to Brown is in there for a strike. Bobby Brown, Willie Randolph, and Bucky Dent. And I don't think the Yankee Stadium crowd at this point has recovered. They are still stunned, and they are remarkably quiet here in the Yankees' half of the seventh inning. But it is not over yet. He's going to butt. It's foul behind home plate, and the count goes 0-2 to Bobby Brown. Reaches out and lofts it to shallow foul territory behind third base, and there's George Brett to put it away. One gone for the Yankees here in the seventh. So Bobby Brown fouls out to the third baseman. One out for the Yanks in inning number seven on the top of the order up in Willie Randolph. Bucky Dent follows him. Now Dan Quisenberry has to be thinking that uh, if he can get two outs out of the next three hitters, he will not have to face Reggie Jackson as the potential tying run this inning. The pitch in for a strike, one and one. Chopper hit to Brett, cuts it off, throws across the diamond in time. 5 3 and a put out of Willie Randolph. And the Yankees have two outs now in the seventh inning. Bucky Dent to the plate. Dent tonight is 0 for 3. He has bounced out to second. Grounded into a double play and flied out to center field. One strike delivery on the way. Tapper hit over the mound, charged by White. He feels by the bag, throws over the first base in time. It's a one, two, three inning for the Yankees in the seventh. And we go to the eighth with the Royals leading four to two. High above Yankee Stadium in New York, a stunned Yankee Stadium where amazingly enough, many of the fans have already started to turn and go to the exits as the Yankees and the Royals now on inning number eight in the third pitcher of the night for the New York Yankees, Tom Underwood, a left-hander. And that really tells you something when the top man out of the bullpen for the New York Yankees, Gossage, goes only one inning, of course is hit by the big home run by George Brett. Take him out the next inning. Gossage no longer in there, and Underwood replacing him. Amos Otis, Willie Aikens, Daryl Porter, for the Royals here in the eighth against Tom Underwood. The first pitch is high and away, ball one. Kansas City, four runs, 11 hits in one air. The New York Yankees, two runs, seven hits and no airs. And again, the Yankee Stadium crowd stunned and sounding like an exhibition crowd. Line drive, base hit, center field for Amos Otis. And you can hear some of the Royals fans applauding in the background, and that is about it. Everybody else sitting on their hands, the New Yorkers, and there are a ton of them here tonight, 56,588. They are not doing very much noise-making right now. I'm sure, Al, that Amos Otis, along with many of the other Royals, glad to see Rich Gossage taken out. Uh, Amos had a couple of uh, off-balance swings against Rich, and uh, when Hal McRae was thrown out attempting to steal, gave Amos new life, this time against Underwood. Now the Royals, they have really really had some exciting baseball exciting individual moments in this short three game series and getting the gossage and getting him out after one inning that's a remarkable accomplishment one one pitch to Akins hit well to left field but Panella has the range on it he's there and makes the grab Otis retreats to first base one gone for the Royals here in the eighth as Willie Akins flies out to Lou Panella in left field and Daryl Porter will come to home plate. Porter tonight has walked and he has flat out twice to Pinella in left. Underwood sets. They got Otis leaning the wrong way. Throw to Watson, goes down to Dent, put the tag on him. One, three, six on the put out of Amos Otis, caught stealing. Very unusual, Al. You will see Amos Otis picked off that badly, especially by a left-hander. But uh, as we said yesterday, a uh, great student of pitchers and their idiosyncrasies, this time misjudging and misreading uh, Underwood's delivering. Now you see the throw by Watson to Dent, caught stealing. Otis with eight straight successful stolen bases, first time in the playoffs he's ever been caught stealing. Curveball that misses Tuno, the count to Darrell Porter. So the base is clean right now. Two outs for the Royals in their half of the eighth. We'll look ahead to the Yankees' half of the eighth in just a bit. Swing and a drive. Hit deep straight away center field. But there is Brown. He has the range as the ball dies, and he makes the grab. 
Royals gone in their half of the eighth. Yankees have coming up. Watson, Jackson, Gamble. We'll be back with the bottom of the eighth right after this. Bottom of the eighth inning at Yankee Stadium. Three, four, and five hitters for New York. Watson, Jackson, and Gamble against Quisenberry. Four runs, 12 hits, and an error for the Royals. Two runs, seven hits, and no errors for the Yanks. Kansas City with Quisenberry and Porter, the infield, Akins, White, UL Washington, and George Brett, the outfield, Wilson, Otis. They've got John Watson in right field. Of course, Hurdle started the game. Watson remained in. Dick Hauser in the Yankee dugout as Watson stands in. Two to three. The only time he went out tonight, it took a fine play by White to nail him. On one. And into left center field for a base hit and maybe more. Otis can't track it down. All the way to the wall. 430 feet away. Watson rounding second on his way to third. The throw is high, backed up by Quisenberry. It's a triple. Bob Watson with a single, a double, and now a triple. And here you'll just see a ball. He kind of gets up. Well, he's, I guess, down and in a fairly good pitch. We talked about Death Valley. That's exactly where he hit it. Can't get to it. Questionable play right here. I think maybe a good relay is going to make it awfully close, but he, he throws it high, and the pitcher is exactly where he's supposed to be, backing up the play. Well, with two runs down, I don't think I want him to be stretching out a triple. Trip doesn't mean anything at this point. Kansas City infield, of course, can afford to play back with Jackson at the plate. Two run Royals lead. Watson at third. Nobody out. 0 and 1. McCoy taking that one. Home plate on fire, and the count is 0 and 2. One and two the count. Well, he's going to be facing some tough customers. He's got Oscar, Oscar Gamble on deck, and then you'll see Cerrone, and then you have Lou Pinello. You'll probably see Jim Spencer, another home run hitter, followed by Greg Nettles. He's got his work cut out for him, but 33 saves. Definitely has the talent to do the job. Two balls, two strikes on Reggie. Yankee bullpen. Looking, looking on. As Reggie awaits the 2-2 pitch. And checks in time. Just outside. Three and two the count. Here, pretty good pitch. Looks like it's a little bit off the plate. Reggie starts him, being as strong as he is, can hold up with a bat. That pitch was outside. This crowd now just rising as one. Three and two on Reggie. Everybody standing. Except the Kansas City wide. <laughs> Three, two to Jackson. Ball four. Not a very good thing to do, Al. You walk Reggie, you set up the a situation where they have to hold him on. You got Oscar Gamble, a pull hitter. If he hit the ball to right field, it's probably going to be a first and third situation. Here comes Jimmy Fry. So Fry again, walking deliberately to the mound as Oscar Gamble comes up for the second time. In the Kansas City uh, bullpen. Well, Alan, he's probably going to go out there and just talk to him, calm him down. And sometimes you go out there just to talk to him how he's going to pitch that certain hitter coming up. Royals leading 4-2, to two, bottom of the eighth inning, nobody out. Watson at third and Jackson at first. Kansas City infield looking for the double play. Oscar can get awful sudden up there. He can... They can take you downtown real quick. Outfield deep, playing 
in the cold. One and oh. We talked yesterday about what a good hitter Oscar Gamble was. He, he would probably classify him as a free swinger, but he has a pretty good idea of the strike zone. Way inside. Two balls and no strikes to count. The clock is crowded at Yankee Stadium. And remember, Quisenberry had a great year, but still pretty young, relatively inexperienced. Well, this is first playoff game, not games, but first playoff series. He's losing his control out there right now. He just can't seem to get it. Well, it probably is because he's trying to keep the ball down. Well, when, he walked Reggie, when he walked Reggie, he put the winning run at home plate, and uh, that's exactly what you don't want to do. If he threw a home run to Reggie, the, the worst thing that could happen was the game would be tied. And that's the thing that Earl Weaver over the years, is, is, I mean, you don't want to do it, but at least you don't lose. And he walks them on four. They're loaded up. So on the bottom of the eighth inning, the Yankees have the bases loaded and nobody out. And Rick Cerrone, the batter. Rick has had good luck against him. He's hit him hard three times now. Twice tonight and once the other day. So it's, uh, he's got his work cut out there. was then the go-ahead run in the sixth inning. One and oh. Rennie Martin in the bullpen. He and Brett down there throwing but really hanging around. It's up to Quisenberry. They were up earlier, so they're probably loose. I think they're pretty interested in what's going to happen up at home plate. Line drive caught by Washington goes to second. They get a double play as Reggie gets doubled off at second base, and the other runners get back. Well, that's not very good base running, is it? No. No, that's what you tell your coaches all the time. Tell the, the runners, don't get doubled off on a line drive. You're two runs down. If the ball goes through... He can't score anyway. The ball's hit too hard, so you just have to stay there. And he just got double off. It's a, it's a, a play that happens to a base runner when they're over anxious and they're just trying real hard. And Reggie Jackson gets caught off second, caught by a mile too. Two down, runners at first and third. And the Yankees going to the bench for Spencer. Pinella scheduled up. The the left hand batting Jim Spencer with good power coming up here two on and two out bottom of the eighth inning the Royals on top four to two Bouncing ball to White. And Quisenberry works out of a bases loaded, no out jam. So the Yankees, here in the bottom of the eighth, come up empty. Lead off triple by Watson, couple of walks, but then the double play, and they take care of Spencer as Reggie Jackson returns to right field. The man doubled off, a bit over anxious at second base. So at the end of eight, Kansas City leading the Yankees by a score of four to two. And the difference in the game, a three-run homer by George Brett in the seventh inning to put the Royals out in front. I spoke with George of Kansas City before the start of the playoffs. If you were to take a look at one thing in this series, the key offensively, would it be speed? Would it be the fact that the Royals might have to hit a couple of home runs against the Yankees. Anything offensively that you see is perhaps providing the difference? Well, I think home runs pay, 
play a big part in, in, a, in the Yankee series that we've played against each other in 76, 77, and 78. We're not a home run hitting team, although every once in a while we can hit a few balls out of the ballpark. I think if we can hit some home runs off Gidry, off John, I think it's definitely going to work to our advantage. It's a little easier to score runs when you hit home runs than you do when, the way we used to do it, and that's just get three or four base hits in a row because the odds are against you. But we're a good ball club, and I think we're capable of hitting the long ball. We're very capable of stealing bases. we got six, six or seven guys that can hit and run. Uh, I just look for an exciting series, and if we can uh, put a, a good offense together, we got a chance to beat them. Uh -huh. George Brett with some very salient comments the way things turned out. Joe LaFay takes over in left field as we go to the ninth. It's like calling his own shot, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Knees. John Wathen leading off in the top of the ninth inning. Wathen, White, and Wilson pitch in for a strike in the count of 1 1. Dick Hauser, when his team comes up in the bottom of the ninth, Nettles, Brown, and Randolph, the eight, nine, and one hitters. Crowd of 56,588 in Yankee Stadium. Down to Watson. Three unassisted. One out of the ninth inning. Frank White, the batter. Well, the Kansas City Royals hoping it turns out to be a one-day trip to New York. They'll be going crazy in KC. Oh. They won't need a plane to get back there, will they? No, I don't believe so. <laughs> one and oh, the count. The Royals seeking their first pennant ever. Of course, Kansas City had the A's before they went to Oakland. And after they were in Philadelphia, they never won a pennant in Kansas City. One ball, one strike to count. George Brett, this is really a marvelous story in terms of the Royals. You talk about expansion clubs and sports, what they have done. Kansas City Royals weren't even in existence until 1969. Started from scratch. Well, I think it's a tribute to Mr. Mr. Kaufman. Built a great complex, built a great team. But it, Nettles, picking it up and throwing and getting it. On a close play at first base. Frank White doesn't agree with that call, and Jim Fry is going to come out to have a few words with Bill Haller. So two down. Kansas City Wives. We take a look at the play again. Well, it just looks like a lot of the plays before uh, looks like it's high. I'm sure Jimmy Fry is saying, you know, it's not over. I know we have a two-run lead, but I think he was safe, and uh, that's what he wanted to call. And I think it's the right thing for Jim to go out there and argue. His player was arguing. He's got to go out there and stick up for his player. If he doesn't do it, then the player's going to say, look, the manager's not even arguing for me. I mean, the game's not over by any means. No way. Powers really had some tough plays to call at first base tonight. I thought he'd done a fabulous job down there. He's really had some tough pieces right, Jim. Willie Wilson, two for four. Because of the length of tonight's game, the show Fridays will not be presented this evening. We'll return next week at its regular time. On one the count on Willie Wilson. Tommy Underwood in relief of Tommy John and Goose Gossage. Kansas City, Kaufman zoning the team, and Joe Burke. Done a great job in that front office. John Sherholz, PR man Dean Vogelar, one of the very, very best. Quite let's a not, guy. Quite yeah, a let's guy. Let's not forget the fans. Yep. I think it's one of the few towns we really enjoy going to because they just appreciate, I think, the game of baseball. Uh, you can pitch a good game against them, and they appreciate that. And I let you know that. Tremendous fans. Well, they sure come out. Over two million in the last couple of years. One two pitch is up and in and the count two balls and two strikes. Two out of the bases empty in the ninth inning. Nick Hauser. Not much he can do at this point. Well, this is what they call a purpose pitch. It's not that far inside. Far enough. You're going to probably go away or throw him a breaking ball. He 
struck him out. So Underwood does the job. Keeps the Royals close. They go out in order. You've got Nettles, Brown, and Randolph coming up bottom of the ninth. It's 4-2 Kansas City back after this match is going to work for a local station. Quisenberry on the mound. Cerrone at the plate. The base is filled. Yankees to the right, left, and behind of Quisenberry. 4-2 Royals in the eighth. 1-1 one, one pitch. Line drive. Speared by UL. Washington to second. Double play. They doubled up Jackson. The Royals, UL Washington, spearing that liner, and Frank White going to the bag to cover, and they double up Reggie Jackson here in the eighth. Basically, the reason that I got in the baseball business is that I thought the people of Kansas City in this great metropolitan area should have a Major League Baseball team. I also would say that I think that Kansas City and Missouri, Kansas, Iowa, Nebraska, Oklahoma are tremendous sports fans, and I thought it would be successful. Al Wiscoloma, Denny Treese, and Steve Busby as the Kansas City Royals, three outs away from their first American League pennant. And the New York Yankees have as their schedule hitters this man, Greg Nettles, Bobby Brown, and Willie Randolph, and Dan Quisenberry, who staggered but did not fall in the eighth inning. Quisenberry has got to get three more outs to do it. Four to two, Kansas City. Bottom of the ninth, Yankee Stadium in New York. Nettles at the plate. Quisenberry on the mound. First pitch to Nettles. Ball one. The biggest inning that Dan Quisenberry has been involved with in his young pitching career, the biggest inning for the Kansas City Royals in their history. Nettles at the plate. Great power. He waits. 1-0 pitch outside, and Quisenberry has suffered with his control the last couple of innings. He's had an unusual problem for him, and that being control, normally Dan, is that never defeats himself by the walk. If you're going to beat him, you have to hit what he throws. The playoffs will change a lot of patterns. Quisenberry, 2-0 delivery. In for a strike. 2-1, the count to Greg Nettles. The Yankee Stadium crowd, most of them giving up. Thinned out considerably. 2-1 delivery. High fly ball, playable, straightaway center field. Coming in, Amos Otis. He's there. He squeezes it. One away in the ninth. Oh, Nettles flies out to center field, and Amos Otis and the Royals are two outs away from the American League pennant. Bobby Brown at the plate here with one gone in the ninth. Don't forget, Denny Treese down in the locker room awaiting the post-game celebration should it come tonight. And the Royals are but two outs away. Four to two, Kansas City. Bottom of the ninth, game three. They lead two victories to none. There is a strike. I don't know about you, Al, but I'm getting pretty excited. It has never happened before, though the Royals have tried their darndest to go to the World Series three times. They've not been able to. It might come on the fourth. High fly ball playable. Shallow left field. Wilson is there, and the Yankees are down to their final out here in the ninth inning. The Royals right on the brink. The World Series is just one out away as Willie Randolph comes to the plate for the Yankees here in inning number nine. Four runs, 12 hits, one air for the Royals. Two runs, eight hits, no airs for the Yankees. Randolph at the plate. Tonight, he is one for three. Quisenberry on the mound. The season for the Yankees, one out away from ending. Quisenberry rocks an emotion. The pitch to Randolph is in for a strike. Randolph didn't like it. He turns to spray some words at Larry McCoy as Dan Quisenberry got the strike call from McCoy. Two gone for the Yankees here in the ninth. The Royals going in front on that towering blast into the third deck in right field by George Brett. That was in the seventh. At that time, the Royals trailing two to one. Quisenberry peers in for the sign from Porter. The one strike pitch. One and one to count to Willie Randolph. The Royals winning the first game by a score of 7-2. They won last night 3-2. They're trying to win this one 4-2. 1-1 pitch. 2-1 to count to Willie Randolph. Outfield fanned out. Infield back with two outs. As the Royals 
one out away from going to the World Series. The 2-1 pitch to Randolph. Bounding ball hit foul. And the count goes to 2-2 two and two to Willie Randolph. And the Yankees are down to their final strike. The Royals, three previous times, tried but couldn't get past the New York Yankees to the World Series as the Yankees barred the way. Three frustrating experiences now coming to an end. Just one strike away. Two and two to count to Randall. Two outs. Royals leading. Four to two. Last of the night. Yankee Stadium. Game number three. Two two pitch. Up high. Three and two to count to Randall. Quisenberry, 33 saves during the regular season. One last night. Looking for another. Time called now as some debris coming out in the field as somebody throwing what looks like a golf ball onto the field in left field and Willie Wilson had to flip it out of the way. Royals now getting set to go. Quisenberry 3-2 pitch. A call strike three. That's it. The Royals go to the World Series as they beat the New York Yankees 4-2 here at Yankee Stadium. The Royals pouring out onto the field. Leaping up and down, there's Leonard and Walkman and Gordy McKenzie and the whole crew on the field as the Kansas City Royals, for the first time, winners of the American League pennant. Three and two the count. Cold strike three, and Kansas City wins the pennant. in 77 and 78 coming into New York and sweeping the American League Championship Series. Greg Nettle, a reflection of the Yankee move. Quisenberry, Sarone, the Royals bullpen. Back they go into the clubhouse. Bob Euchre is down there. The Kansas City Royals have swept it. Led by Brett and Wilson and Quisenberry and White who had a sensational series.